today's show. The oldest woman in Salford with a letter from the Queen at 103 years of age. 100 years of art here in Salford, an exhibition to reflect. Closing in less than an hour, who will be elected the president of Salford University? But first, two men have been arrested following a violent carjacking incident late last night. A woman was dragged out of her vehicle on Manchester Road in Pendlebury. The offenders threatened to stab the woman and attack her with a metal bar. Specialist officers from GMP's Tactical Vehicle Intercept Unit managed to stop the car. The offenders were eventually restrained by a police dog. Stephen Turton, a formal junior football coach, has been sentenced to 13 years and 6 months after he admitted to sexually abusing two boys. Turton coached under 11 side for the Salford during the early 1990s. Following Turton's arrest, a second victim came forward, revealing he had been abused back through the ages of 8 to 16. Residents of a council-funded squat in Eccles are under threat of becoming homeless once again. Stacey Martindale, previously left without a home, emphasises how these squats will make a huge impact on those with previous convictions. Molly Kennedy reports. An ex-GP surgery in Eccles has been converted into a homeless shelter. Stacey Martindale volunteered here and explained to us the current living situation. And they have built a case together that basically it's not just a, a, a simple eviction. We're, we're, it's not just as simple as getting everybody out of the house because we are making a difference to people's lives. We're rehabilitating them, we're helping them, we're getting them linked in with agencies and stuff to, to help with any problems, boundaries they've got, be it drug addiction, alcoholism, be it mental health issues. We've got a variety of different people in this building and we try and take all that into consideration. Stacey previously lived here at the shelter before moving into a flat made available by Andy Burnham's A Bed For Every Night scheme. She now regularly visits and helps out on a voluntary basis, bringing food and helping residents apply for jobs. It, it works because everyone's got a mutual agreement, understanding with each other, they all respect each other and they all understand that without this building they'd have nowhere to live so they, they all kind of just work, get along, they all work together, cook with each other and keep the place clean and tidy. And we get a lot of donations, we get food donated, clothes donated, bedding, or even household items just to make it more homely for the guys. So we, like I say, it's more about awareness right now. There are currently 10 men living at the shelter and still room for more. They are all hoping to extend their stay as they say the shelter is helping to change their lives. Last night, the Salford Museum and Art Gallery hosted their 100-year Salford exhibition. The event is part of a three-month campaign to showcase artwork collected by the museum over the last century. James Holt reports. 
of art. From the 20s to present day, the Salford Museum and Gallery hosted an exhibition of their diverse collections from the last 100 years. This is a launch event tonight for this exhibition. Um, what we've got is 100 years of collecting. So Salford Museum started collecting well, over 100 years ago and they sort of stopped collecting uh, about 50 years ago, which is actually where we started collecting. So you've got a range of works from like quite historic, what you might think of quite traditional painting, drawing, all the way through to like really contemporary works. We've got digital videos, we've got all sorts. What we've tried to do is do an overview of the past 100 years. So um, we've tried to reflect the different interests over, we've separated it into decades. We collect under three different policies, which is work from the north. We think it's really important to support artists who are living and working in the north now. And that includes um, our students as well as artists living in the region. Uh, we collect Chinese contemporary art, which might seem like a bit of an odd one, but the Chinese art market is actually the biggest in the world. So there's loads of really important and really exciting work coming out of that. And we also collect work uh, under a strand called About the Digital. So as we're living in an increasingly digital age, it's really important that we reflect that in our collection. Uh, we've got a video piece by Chris Paul Daniels and Sam Meach, and they made it around uh, Media City and Salford Keys. And we've also got a painting by an artist called Mandy Payne. Uh, she's based in Sheffield, but she's been doing some work in Salford, and she's really inspired by the change in landscape, so all that architecture that's coming up. She's really inspired, and so she made the work specifically in response to Salford. Paul Dennett, Salford's mayor, was eager to express his support, claiming it brought a new insight into local contemporary art. He said that arts and culture sits at the forefront of Salford's new and developing image. Some of the young artists were on hand to see their work exhibited alongside other well-known artists. I do a lot of landscape artwork, so I wanted to bring that into this print as much as I could. So my work's based on the English style square plates over in the corner. So I wanted to bring that reflection in on it as well. So I decided to design it in circular shapes. So the images in the centre are of some photographs I've taken of uh, landscapes that I like to visit frequently. Acquired, a century of collecting will continue until June this year as the museum and university work together to save pieces of work from the north and the world. Who knows, we may be set for another exhibition in the next century. James Holt, Salford Now. In aid of International Women's Day, we looked into the official figures released from Salford Council's Gender Pay Gap report. Figures show that females in Salford are receiving a significantly lower pay as opposed to men. We spoke to award-winning writer Kath Staincliffe, a woman inspired by literature who celebrates the progression of the female movement. In terms of it being International Women's Day, it's a day about celebration, you know, celebrating uh, women and all their achievements, but it's also about flagging up the fact that we've still got a long, long way to go. So, you know, we've still got the gender gap, we've got inequality in most professions and most industries, and I think our emphasis will be on celebration and looking at what's helped us as women to develop our work and the support that women have given each other. But it's interesting, the very first way I started out writing was I went to an International Women's Day event at Manchester Town Hall and tried a writer's workshop. Environmental group Manchester Friends of the Earth have criticised recent proposals to introduce clean air zones across the region by 2024. The Greater Manchester Combined Authority published a list of areas where the zones will be located, including Salford, with vehicles such as HGVs, buses and taxis set to be charged between £7.50 to £100. Roads in Salford were named some of the most polluted in the region, as it is estimated that the equivalent of 1,200 deaths in Greater Manchester are linked to air pollution. The group say the plans lack urgency and need to be implemented sooner. Oh, there's Sorry, been some technical issues. Still to come, imagine being the oldest woman in Salford. Mabel Lyons shares her experiences. And Joe will be giving us the weather with a twist. But first, the university held their presidential election debate last night, with voting closing at 4pm today. Students are being encouraged to make their voices heard. Charlie Mulholland reports. My name is Evie Adams. Hi, I'm Michelle and I'm, I'm running, running for, for president. president. Over the last few weeks, these three women, along with their other three candidates, have been campaigning to become the next student president here at the University of Salford. 
Last night, the debate was held here in Media City, which gave an opportunity for the public to ask questions for their next potential president. Campaigners have been taking part all week in several activities to try and get the public vote. From talking to their fellow students about what they want in their manifestos, to baking free pancakes on the main campus. However, I spoke to all of the candidates to see what they had to say for their manifestos. It's mainly integration, because I feel like that's an important part of university life, especially because this is my second time round at a completely different university, um, and I've, I felt that that was an important aspect. The thing I'm most passionate about is reading weeks. So some courses have them, some courses don't. A lot of universities across the country have them, and so should Salford. It's not fair that we don't. I want to make sure that first-year first year students as well as final-year students get the support and advice that they need and want. I believe that as a president, I'm someone you, can, you know and you can trust and come and have a, a quiet chat to. Whilst at the debate, many points were brought up, such as bringing more events to the students, recording their classes and the issue of parking on campus. I think like Allerton campus really suffers because they've lost a lot of their car parking space at the moment because of the new building and then that building will hopefully have more car parking so it's an ongoing issue. We shouldn't be using third parties, we've got the resources as a university to be bringing these in house, that's how most other universities run. But it's following on from what Evie said, we need to be making sure that if you are paid for a permit you can actually get a spot. To park for example at the Lowry if you're at uh, media city I think it costs like six pounds for three to four hours or something like that or something silly like that but I feel like if the university could control that I'm sure the public could not do that for media city but absolutely for Peel Park because I think there's enough car parks for them to um, have ownership. The voting closes later today at 4 p.m. and students can go to the student union website to cast their vote. Charlie Mulholland, Salford now. At 103 years of age, Mabel Lyons is the oldest woman in Salford. She remembered Salford during the Blitz and even knew Alice Lowry in her youth. But what does she do in her day-to-day -day life? I've been down to speak to Mabel. So you are 103, is that right? Yes. 103. That means you must have had uh, a letter from the Queen. It's somewhere. Is it over there? Yes, the Queen's photo. The Queen's photo. Is that what it looks like? Is that what you received? Well, have a look. Shall I have a look? Have a look. I thought about when I was 100. You all get those when you're 100. It's been three years since Mabel received her letter from the Queen. The 103-year-old still keeps Her Majesty's picture close to hand. Born during the Great War, Mabel remembers Salford during World War II as a living hell. Well, when I got married, I was 25. 25. What year I, was that in? Pardon? What was the year? 1940. 1940. Got married June 1940, the first year of the war. What was that like? Eh? What was that like? like oh, well, it was through? just hell. Hell. Mm. I mean, <laughs> it was terrible, the noise, because, I mean, where they lived, they were right next to Trafford Park. Right. And you see, the Germans were after Trafford Park. Ah. Well, Trafford Park was the largest industrial unit in the world. While Mabel has fond memories of growing up in Salford, she worries for young people today. I am it's unbelievable. I never thought in all my life I would hear and experience such horrible times in a place like Salford. As a painter, Mabel got to know Lowry, but says Salford's most famous artist was simply an unassuming man. Well, I knew him through... Uh, uh, I didn't know if he was anybody or near another man from Swinton. So, Zach, how was visiting Mabel? Well, she was a lovely lady and uh, she was very, very welcoming. She had a lot oh. to say. Um, she, her memory was fantastic, given her age, and... Um, she was very, she was lovely. Uh, she remembered a lot about the Blitz, uh, the Manchester Blitz, and um, she was very, very pleased with her letter from the Queen. Uh, she was very, um, she was very happy with that. There we go, the oldest woman in Salford. Hopefully she'll get another letter. We're at 105, I believe. We hope so. <laughs> we hope so. Amazing, Mabel is certainly the star of the show today. Now over to Joe with the weather. 
How's it looking? As you can see, the aftermath of Storm Freya, which battered Salford earlier in the week, is still having an effect on the weather today. With rainfall likely for the rest of the week and into Monday, Salford will probably have five straight days of rainfall. As we head into next week, the forecast doesn't change much, with Monday probably being the only respite from the rain. Temperatures vary between 6 degrees on Sunday to 9 degrees on Monday. So if you're heading to Salford Docks Walk on Sunday, please wrap up warm and take some waterproof so it's going to be a cold and wet day. Joe Buck, Salford now. Well, that's all we've got time for today. If you want to keep up to update with all the latest news, follow Salford Now on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Thank you.